Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a technical product manager in the mobile and embedded devices group. And just recently, we've been looking at building electronic picture frames using Windows CE. We already have one video that's up on channel nine that discusses how to build an electronic picture frame using the Windows CE emulation environment. There are a number of steps that I considered for the next version of the electronic picture frame. Obviously, first, we had the emulation environment, which was sharing a folder on the desktop. So I could just drop images into that folder and have them displayed inside of the picture frame. The logical next step would be to create a share on a physical Windows CE device and drop files into that. And then the extension beyond that would be to use either web services for devices or to use XML web services. As it happens, the Windows Mobility team already created a set of applications, which they're calling the uh, PhotoVision application, which is a combination of XML web service, a desktop application to upload images to the web service, a web-based user interface to view images that are contained on the PhotoVision app, uh, as well as exposed XML web service functions that you can use to programmatically either upload or view images on the web XML web service. So I decided to use PhotoVision for the, uh, the final step of an electronic picture frame running on top of Windows CE. So let's take a look at, the, uh, at my laptop screen. And first of all, I'll show you the PhotoVision application. So this is the desktop application that is used to upload images onto the PhotoVision XML web service. And in this case, the XML web service is running on my laptop. You can see that I have a number of albums that are already uploaded onto the XML web service. And that includes animals, baby, corbis, flowers, and land. So I can create new albums and I can upload new photos to each of these albums. So this is a desktop application. It's a Visual Basic application, visualbasic.net, written in Visual Studio. But there is also a web-based user interface as well. If I click on Start and Run, and I browse to the web UI, which is Name of My Machine and PhotoVision VB, then I can see a web-based UI onto exactly the same set of albums and photographs. So for example, I could open up Corbis and view each of the images from the uh, set of Corbis photographs that are part of this album. So the web UI is one way for me to step through the albums and step through the images that are included in each of the albums. Obviously what we like to do is have a standalone electronic picture frame based on Windows CE, which could live anywhere in the world, just as long as it has internet access to the web server that is hosting my XML web service, I should be able to upload images to that and have my electronic picture frame view those images. So at this point, I have already downloaded a Windows CE operating system to a reference board that is shown here. And this is the iCarp eBox 2 reference board. And this is selling for less than $200. This is x86 based, 128 meg of RAM, three USB, audio, serial, parallel, video, and Ethernet. You can see on the screen here, we've already got the image downloaded, and this is running Windows CE version 5. There are a couple of things that we'd like to do before we build our operating system image that will host our uh, application, which will be written in C Sharp, to view and consume the images on the XML web service. You can see at the bottom of the screen here, there is a taskbar. When we start up the Windows CE operating system and view our images, ideally we would like the taskbar to be hidden or not visible. So I'm going to right click on the taskbar and select properties. This will bring up a dialog that gives me the ability to turn off always on top and also auto hide, turn that on. So now when I click on OK, you'll notice that the taskbar goes into auto hide mode. This is actually controlled by the registry inside of Windows CE. So now, if I swap over to my Windows CE development tools, and this is an application called Platform Builder, and this is the tool that I use to configure and build the operating system that we've just seen running on the ICOP board. What I can now do is select Tools, and also select the Remote Registry Editor. What I would like to do is connect to the registry of the ICOP board and extract the registry information for those two keys that have just been modified inside of the operating system. So I select Remote Registry Editor. 
that will launch the editor and give me the opportunity to select what sort of device I want to connect to. You can see there are a number of devices in my list here. In the case of Windows CE version 5, Windows CE default platform and default device is always the last platform that I connected to from Platform Builder. So I'm going to choose default device and then click on OK. This will now make a connection between the remote registry editor and the Windows CE reference board using a technology known as Kittle or the Kernel Independent Transport Layer. Once the connection has been made, I'll then be able to step down through each of the keys in the registry and extract the information about always on top and auto hide from the registry. And this will just take a second to connect. Okay, now that we're connected to the remote registry, I can expand default device, HQ look machine, software, Microsoft, and shell. If I expand the shell, you should be able to see that there are two registry keys here, auto hide and on top. So now what I'd like to do is just exp expand the, uh, the shell item and save this onto my hard drive. So I'm going to select registry and export and I'm going to export the registry to a file called shell.reg and we'll use this later. Hit save and save that registry key, set of registry keys to this. We're now done with the remote registry editor so I can now close that down. Okay, so the next step would be to build a custom Windows CE operating system and then add our C Sharp custom application into the, uh, the operating system that we're going to build. Let's first of all examine inside of Visual Studio .NET 2003 the application that has already been written. It's only about 30 lines of code for the complete application. You can see here what I'm doing is making a call to uh, a function within the application called getAlbums and the getAlbums function walks down through each of the albums by calling a function on the XML web service to extract each of the albums that exist on the XML web service. And now I can call get thumbnail to extract the name of each of the photos inside of the album. Let's open up the WSDL file, which is the web service description language for the XML web service. And I'm just going to grab the URL for the web service inside of Visual Studio, right click and open URL. This will open the web service URL and give us a listing of the APIs that I can call on the photo service XML web service. So you can see that I can call a function called get albums and we can test this out directly inside of Visual Studio by clicking on get albums and then hitting the invoke button. And this will return us a blob of XML that contains a listing of all of the albums that are contained on the XML web service. So you can see here that we have animals, baby, corbis, flowers, and land. So once I've called that function to get albums, I've got the album names, and then on each of those albums, I can call get thumbnails to get a listing of each of the photos that are included in that album. And then, of course, I can single step through each of those photographs and display them on the screen of the, uh, the Windows CE device. OK, so now let's use Platform Builder to create a new Windows CE operating system image. I select File, a new platform. Oh, my debug is currently running, so I'm just going to do a target detach. and then select File and New Platform. I select Next. Choose a name for the platform, and I'm going to call this Web Frame, because this is um, a web-based picture frame project that we're working on. I select Next. You can see I have a choice of board support packages here. I'm going to choose the ICAR eBox board support package. The, uh, the eBox reference board has got a 128 meg of RAM on board, uh, which is pretty neat for a reference board. 
So I'm going to select Next. I'm going to choose Internet Appliance as the starting point for this, this, uh, this platform. But of course I could choose any of the other starting points and layer on any additional technologies that I need. I select Next. And then we get into the part of the wizard that will ask me questions about the type of components that I want in my operating system image. We're going to be using a .NET Compact Framework application. So you can see here that .NET Compact Framework is pre-enabled for us. I could disable this and then add it in directly from the catalog later if I require. I've also got support here for audio and video and also the internet browser. And those options are fine. I'm going to select Next. And for networking and communications, right now I have wired networking support. And again, that's fine. I select Next, and now we're done with the wizard. So I can now hit Finish. So right now, Platform Builder is generating the, the new platform. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the catalog inside of Platform Builder. This contains all of the components that exist for Windows CE that I, that I can add to my platform. And on the left-hand side of the screen is the project workspace that is being generated for me by Platform Builder. In effect, this is the hardware-dependent components, which would be the device drivers and hardware abstraction layer for the operating system, as well as the hardware-independent components, such as the .NET Compact Framework, the web browser, and so on. OK, so there are a few changes that we need to make to our, plat to our platform before we're ready to build and download the operating system. If I switch on to the parameter view, this is where I get the ability to set things like the name of the platform as it boots onto the network. So I'm going to open project-specific files and the project registry. Inside the project registry, you can see a registry key that says hkeylocalmachine backslash ident. This is for identity. This is the identity of the platform as it exists on the network. So I'm going to copy this, come to the end of the file, add a couple of blank lines, and paste this in. And I'm going to change the name to C9 Demo. This is going to be my Channel 9 Demo device, and Channel 9 Demo for description. So this will be the description of the device as it appears on the network. And now I'm going to save the, uh, the registry information that I've just modified. OK, so what about our c -sharp application? We need some way of incorporating that application into our operating system image. So I'm just going to minimize Platform Builder and Visual Studio. The application is pre-built. We just need to include this into the operating system image. So I'm going to run a utility, which is called CE FileWiz. And this utility is available on uh, the Microsoft download site and also from my blog, which is blogs.msdn.com, whack my call. This application makes it very easy for me to add new applications or files into an operating system image. So what I'm going to do here is simply select Add Files. I'm going to browse to the demo folder and to a folder called SD web friendly, which is the folder that contains my c -sharp Compact Framework application. And in the debug folder, here's my application to add into the operating system. So SD web frame, select open. And you can see here that we've added the SD web frame application into the list of files to be included in the operating system. And the application is under type of files. Now, with Windows CE, you would typically expect any executable code, whether this be a program or a DLL, to be in the modules field within the operating system, because it's executable code. Items that typically live in the files area would be bitmaps and audio files, files that are non-executable. In our case, this is a compact framework application, which is in PE format, but it's also MSIL, the Microsoft Intermediate Language. So this also needs to live in the files section. This utility also gives me the ability to add uh, something called sysgens, which are variables that will include components from the Windows CE catalog into the final operating system image. Now, CE FileWiz has already determined that this is a compact framework application, so it has already set the sysgens for .NET, 
.NET support, and also the Visual Studio Smart Device Authentication Utilities. So at this point, we're pretty much good to go. I'd also like my application to start when the Windows CE operating system boots. So I'm going to say that I want my application not to be in the, the Windows folder, but to be in the Windows Startup folder. And the component name is going to be C9 Frame for the Channel 9 Picture Frame component. And the platform that I want to add this to is going to be WebFrame, which is the current uh, project that I'm working on. So I select WebFrame here, and then select Build. OK, that's done. I can now close down this application. If I now come back to Platform Builder, what I'd like to do is select File, Manage Catalog Items. This is where I add new components into the catalog inside of Windows CE. I'm going to select Import. And I want to import from the WinCE 500 PB workspaces web frame and C9 frame folder. So you can see that we now have a new CEC file here that's just been generated for us by the CE FileWiz application. And this is called C9 CEC. I click on open. And this will add this component, the C9 frame CEC, C9 frame component, into the catalog. So once the catalog has been updated with the new component that we've just added, underneath third party, I should be able to locate the, uh, the C9 frame component, right click, add to my OS design, and now on the left hand side of the screen, under both the OS design view and also the file view, I'll have a new component. So if I switch to OS design view and expand projects, you can see that the C9 frame project has now been added to my operating system image. If I now switch over to the file view and expand projects C9 frame, you can see each of the files that make up this project. This project doesn't actually build anything as such because the application is pre-built. But this will include our application into the final operating system image and give us the ability to uh, uh, run that application as part of the OS. So the one thing that we're missing here is the, the registry keys that are going to be used to hide the taskbar on our final operating system image. So as part of our component here, c9frame.reg, I can open this up and put in here the registry information that we captured from our remote registry editor. So I'm going to browse to WinCE 500. And here is the shell registry file that we created by using the remote registry editor for Windows CE and capturing that information from, from the device registry. So I'm just going to right click and edit. Edit this in Notepad. Here's the registry information. You can see this is HQ Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, Shell, and the two sub keys are Auto, Hide, and On Top. So I'm going to just grab that registry information, copy that to the clipboard, and then step back over to Platform Builder and paste that registry information in. OK, so I can now save the modified registry. And now I can build the operating system image. There's nothing else that I need to do here. There are two ways to do that. I can either click on the Build and Sysgen button, which is on the toolbar here, or I can select Build OS and Sysgen. And this will start the build process for Windows CE. And the build process is going to take approximately 10 minutes to complete. OK, now that the operating system has been built, all we need to do is download this to our target and this should boot the Windows CE version 5 operating system and automatically start our application. So to download, I simply go to Target and Attach Device. And also restart the reference board, which after a few seconds will send out a boot request and the download process will then begin. Once we've downloaded, the operating system will start. 
and the Compact Framework application should auto start and then connect to our XML web service to start pulling down photos. The boot request has just been sent. We can now see on the laptop screen the download progress as we're downloading the operating system to the target. And then in a few seconds we'll be able to switch over to the reference board screen and see the output there. Okay, so download is complete. We should start to see a few debug messages at the bottom of the screen inside the platform builder as the operating system starts up. And then within a few seconds, we should see the screen starting up over on the reference board. Okay, so here's the Windows CE shell. You can see that the taskbar is hidden and minimized at the bottom of the screen. Our compact framework application has also started. And within a few seconds, this should connect to the XML web service that is running on my laptop and start pulling down images from the photo vision samples. Okay, so here we go. Of course, the, uh, the first image is, if that we received is animals, but this is actually running on a, a random number generator. So we enumerate the albums, enumerate each of the photos in the albums, and then generate a random number between zero and the maximum number of photos, and then pull out one of those images from the, uh, the database on the XML web service. Of course, what I could do now very easily is use the desktop photo vision application to add new images onto the XML web service, and then also have those displayed on the uh, on the the, the uh, Windows CE device. So that's pretty much it. Just during the last few minutes, we've been through the process of configuring the Windows CE operating system to boot and run an an application that consumes photos from an XML web service that's being provided by the PhotoVision sample that was written by the uh, Windows Mobility guys.